Right, people, we're gonna be talking about these lenses, but hold on. Check out the state of this track, mate. Joe Capriati, was any of you lot at Awakenings this year? Check this out, mate. My God, mate, honestly. DJ Jock, mate. I'm gonna have to use this track in a video at some point. Anyway, look, let's stop the madness. Let's stop the madness. Yes, I've got an issue with techno, but you know, we're probably gonna have to use that track in a video at some point, because that is just absolutely ludicrous. Anyway, people, what's going on, you lot? I hope you're all sweet. Um, yeah, mate, it's a little bit of an update session, do you know what I mean? Like, when we spend bags and bags on lenses and that, like, specifically, this one right here, Sony G Master 1635 2.8, and uh, the Sony 50mm 1.8 and the Sony 85mm 1.8. Quite recently, I recently upgraded to these lenses from my absolutely rubbish Canon 18, no, Canon 10 to 18 and Canon 50mm 1.8, which don't get me wrong, the lenses were sick and I used them for like almost 10 years. And then that is when I decided to upgrade to these much more expensive and absolutely wallet crushing G Master and um, this 85, I mean like, don't get me wrong, these two ain't actually that expensive, but this bad boy here, honestly mate, you are eating baked beans for a good couple of weeks if you buy yourself a G Master, mate. So after making my video talking about how I'm gonna upgrade to these naughty new lenses, I thought, you know what, after using them for like three or four months, why don't I make like an update video on what I generally think as a user is the pros and the cons of these more expensive lenses over these cheaper lenses? Because it might give you a lot an idea as to go like, yeah, do I actually need bare expensive lenses or should I go the cheaper route? Before I do though, mate, hold your horses. Yes, it's the WeBuilt S, mate. I know we've all been wanting the review of this absolutely naughty gimbal, but you know what, I'm holding off, mate. I've had this gimbal for like a good two and a half months. And um, yeah, I didn't want to be that guy who just like gets a gimbal. The next day he makes a review like, oh yes, I know this gimbal inside out. No, you don't, mate. You don't know the gimbal. You've had it for like 24 hours. How do you know if this is a sick gimbal? I've made gimbal reviews in the past where I've had it for like a week and I thought, yeah, mate, this is sick. And um, the gimbal has been sick. But then a couple of months down the line, I've been like, you know what? That actually annoys me a bit. That bit there annoys me. That bit there annoys me. And um, I obviously didn't get to say that in a video. So you know what? I'm gonna hold off for a few weeks, test this thing out. I mean, I've taken it to Scotland, I've taken it to France. I've also um, used it on seven client jobs so far. When I do eventually give you that review, mate, it is gonna be a little bit naughty. Now I'm not gonna get too like techy and specky on all these things. I mean, there's so many other channels that go super into detail on these kind of things. I just wanna give you like a real user review and what I think is good about these lenses after using them like in real practical environments. Now, first up, mate, the 1635, built like an absolute brick shit house, mate. I've dropped this thing twice. Um, I know I said I was gonna start looking after my lenses and I do look after them, but the thing is, yeah, when you're on location, you've got up for sunrise, the sun's like coming up and everything's going crazy and you're like getting your bag open, you're like, oh, get the camera on the lens and, I mean, get the, the lens on the camera. Now I did actually drop this on a client gig and it fell like that. Now, unfortunately my filter ring is now a bit bent and I can hardly get my bloody, where is it? My bloody ND filter on here, mate. Look, oh, oh shit. Here we go, so look, me, huh, Peter McKinnon, Polar Pro ND filter, typical YouTuber me, and I? Anyway, look, this now just, Won't, basically, it won't go on. I can actually get my filter back on here if I give it like a bit of whammy, but once it's on, then I can't get it off again, and it's like, oh. Now that's not an issue with the lens, that's just an issue with me, mate. I've got my own issues, do you know what I mean? Next up is the sharpness, mate. Now let's be honest, we all knew that the G Master was gonna be sharper than this 10 to 18 crop lens, but it was so sharp that I was like watching my 1080p footage back, like, hold on a sec, is that 4K? I felt like my camera actually gained resolution just by having a much sharper lens. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not always a massive fan of super sharp looks, but you can always bring that sharpness down and actually add a little bit of character, like what the 10 to 18 has. It's not very sharp, got loads of chromatic aberration, the edges are a little bit soft, and um, yeah, it's just got loads of character about it. You can make the 1635 look like that, but you cannot make the 10 to 18 look like a G Master, mate. It just ain't happening. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the flares, mate. 
The flares between these two lenses is so different. This is super dusty, super dirty. Now that's mainly my fault because the actual lens itself is super scratched up and got loads of marks on it and it's not clean. So yeah, man, this thing has had an absolute beating over the years. It makes me really, really want to look after this front piece of glass element because if that gets dirty, if that gets scratched, oh, them flares are not going to be looking sweet, mate. So look, let's look after this little number. Little bit of this, little bit of that, you know, and hopefully we're, we'll keep this thing nice and clean. Now, initially, I thought I was going to be a little bit pissed off with this lens just because of how heavy it is and the size of it, but it actually worked a lot in my favour. When you're doing, like, handheld shots, you've got a lot more weight and a bigger setup to move, so you can't really give it that micro jitter. One thing that I didn't really like about the G Master, and I already knew it, it's the focus ring, mate. Now, don't get it wrong, the focus ring is really nice, but the way that the focus works, it focuses by wire. So there's a wire in there that actually pulls the focus. And so when you turn it, it's not like completely real time. There's a bit of a delay and then there's a delay on the end. So once you think you've got it in sharp, it will kind of keep pulling the focus further. And you're like, hold on, now I'm out of focus. I just got my focus perfect and you've just taken it out. But you know what, I have got used to it. It just takes a little while to actually get the hang of knowing your lens. That's why I always say it's better to know your gear really well and know it inside out than to just have brand new sick gear because you're not gonna really know how to use it. You're not gonna know that gear so well. So yeah, after actually using it for a while, now I feel like I've got to grips with pulling focus on this. So yeah, mate, it's actually pretty sweet. So that is all the pros and cons from like a user perspective of using these two lenses. The biggest con about this lens is the bloody price, mate. If you're happy eating baked beans, you do it, mate. You get yourself a couple of Gs and, um, yeah, lose a couple of Gs in the process of buying it. But yeah, overall, mate, honestly, I can't really see myself not using this lens and going to this unless I really want, like, a harsh, non-sharp, gritty, characteristic look out of something like this. So, yeah, man. Next up, let's have a little chat about the 50 mils, mate. The nifty 50s, mate. Used to be my very favourite lens, but now... That 16.35, mate, it's just taken me. It's taken my heart, mate. Anyway, yeah, this used to be my favourite lens to shoot on. Super cheap, super easy, super easy to pull focus on. 1.8, good in low light. Yeah, man, little nutter, this lens. Now, for me, this was a much easier purchase to justify. Obviously, this is only like 170 quid, and this is like a 90 pound lens. And I've had this lens for ages. I've always shot on a Canon 50mm, but shooting on Sony, it kind of just makes sense to have a native lens. It's actually sharper, and after I have my Comlight adapter on the Canon 50mm, it's actually heavier than just having the native Sony lens. And the main thing that I prefer over the Sony compared to the Canon is the focus ring. Now the focus ring on the Sony, where are you going? Now the focus ring on the Sony is like much thicker. Look at the Canon one, mate. Bare thin, not even like a centimeter. So when you're pulling focus, sometimes you slip on it and you can't find it, especially if you're just looking at the monitor and you're like, where's my focus ring? Whereas on here, obviously you're just like, yep, you, you know you're gonna get it. So let's leave them two to that side and then let's leave these two like to this side, why not? Um, and yeah mate, last but not least, 85mm 1.8. Absolutely stunning lens. The bokeh on it is absolutely beautiful and when you shoot people, ah, oh, they just look gorgeous mate. But I'll be honest, I don't think it was a good investment. It cost me about 600 quid and to be honest, I just didn't pull it out in any like real life situations. When I'm out on a shoot, when I'm out in the location, I just don't think, yeah, let's get a nice 85 mil shot of that. It's kind of that awkward focal length between 50 and telephoto. It's just not a practical focal length to pick. But if you're on stills, this is probably the best lens that you can get for your money. If you're shooting portraits, you're shooting people, wow, this thing is sick. But for me, obviously I mainly shoot video, so yeah, I can't really see myself using it that much. But you know what, it's gonna stay in my kit bag, it will do a couple of beautiful interviews, and uh, yeah, unfortunately it probably won't get that much use. But you know what, I'm very happy that I did upgrade when I did. I've been using these lenses for nearly 10 years, and because they're not like, the best lenses in the world, it did make me think, right, how can I tell my story with this focal length? How can I actually move my character or my subject through the frame to evoke emotion off of my audience? How can I make them feel a certain way? Shall I go close up on them? Shall I go out wide and make them feel isolated in the area? Yeah, man, it just made me think about the story more than damn, that looks sharp, or man, that's easy to pull focus on. Do you know what I mean? It just makes you think about the story more. So if I was you and you're just starting out, Go for the cheaper lenses, mate. You're gonna drop your lenses just like I did. You're gonna to get to know them, really get to use them in practical environments and think about the story more when you're using these cheaper lenses. And when you're ready, 
that's when you should upgrade, mate. This stuff ain't cheap. I'm trying to be really careful on YouTube and not just like tell people, yeah, get this, get that, buy this. It's like, mate, you don't need, you honestly don't need any of this stuff. But obviously for me, this is my professional life. This is what I do every single day, mate. So the investment actually makes sense for me. If you're just getting into it, if you're just starting out, man, these lenses are such a good option to use. Anyway, people, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope that it gives you a good idea as to when to upgrade, when to maybe hold back and not eat no baked beans for a while, and then eventually upgrade once your filmmaking skills have got to the right level. And I'll be catching you lot in the next video, mate. Oh, yeah. Awkward wink to end, mate.